Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today we're talking about a ship that, in my opinion, Wargaming butchered pretty bad when they introduced her into the game. And we'll talk about why probably a lot of the changes they made to the ship were made, but this ship is the Tier 7 Techline British battleship, the King George V. Now, the King George V is the last real still battleship in the British battleship tech tree. From here on out, it's all paper ships. Uh, the Lion would be the closest thing in this. Well, actually, the Monarch would be the closest thing <laughs> to uh, a real still ship that was almost made. And we'll talk more about that here in a minute within the Lion coming after. And, of course, we do have the Vanguard, which is the Tier 8 British premium battleship that was real and was launched after the war but this is the last tech line real british battleship which is pretty neat that it is in the game in the first place but the king george talk about her real life counterparts uh well counterparts because the tech lines are supposed to represent the um, class of ships not an individual ship so let's talk about the king george the fifth class so just like how we were talking about the north carolina last week it's the 1930s we got a couple of naval treaties in place mainly the washington naval treaty and then the two london naval treaties where there are some pretty strict limitations on the type of ships that could be built um with the case of the Washington Naval Treaty, it pretty much uh, put a stay on the construction of any new capital ships. There is a uh, displacement limit of 35,000 tons, and if you're trying to build a uh, battleship that can fit inside that tonnage weight, it's going to be severely lacking in the armor, armament, or propulsion department. You also couldn't fit a battleship with a larger gun than 14 inch, among several other limitations. So, with the world inching closer and closer to the Second World War, we have quite a few tent, uh, tent situations around the world. And over in the UK, the ship designers, the Royal Navy, is thinking that mm, we don't think these treaties are going to be allowed for, around for too much longer. So they went ahead and started to design a ship that exceeded these, um, the Washington Naval Tree that would displace over 35,000 tons. And as it came around to the second London Naval Treaty, uh, with the King George V class being well underway in terms of uh, being designed, in 1935 it came time to decide, well, what are we going to put on the, these new battleships? Because we're still, they, they were still trying to fit these new battleships into this... Um, this um this design space of trying to you know comply with the naval treaties and it was time to decide are we going to fit a 14 inch gun or are we going to fit a larger caliber gun now according to the original designs of the king george v class they were supposed to be armed with 15 inch guns but the british government decided to go ahead and adhere to the 14 inch gun limit of the london naval treaty uh because at the time the uh us uk and the other um, signatures of this treaty were waiting to see if Japan was going to follow uh, follow the treaty and stick with a 14-inch gun, but they did it because Japan had uh, other ambitions in mind. But it's too late. The UK went ahead and settled for the 14-inch gun, and they were ordered as is, and well, that's how we got the King George V. Now, the King George V class were actually, and you would not know this <laughs> by playing these ships in game, um, they were actually some of the most well protected ships during the war, uh, of the war. Like, out of all the battleships built, the only battleship that had a better armor uh, belt than the King George V was the Yamato. Yes, that's right, this tier 7 battleship in game. Is supposed to be second only to the real life Yamato in terms of protection. Yet in game, it is one of the absolute squishy, uh, squishiest ships in game, bar none. Now, what's interesting is when you dig down into it, they they did follow quite a few parameters of the ship's armor scheme from her real life counterpart in game. When it comes to things like the the main battery belt thickness, uh, the main battery belt was around um, some estimations put it from in from fourteen point eight to fifteen inches thick. And if you look at the armor scheme in game, she does have a three hundred eighty three millimeter belt, which is right at fifteen inches. So they went with the 
upper end of the estimations of how thick the belt armor actually was, but the um, armor was also high quality Royal Navy steel. Um, it was some of the best cemented um, armor in the world, and the, the deck armor too of the uh, machinery spaces was somewhere around the lines of 143 millimeters thick, and in, in game it's it's not. <laughs> that's way thinner than that and even the um, the weather deck the the uh, actual exterior deck of the ship was supposed to be somewhere along the lines of 32 millimeters thick and of course in game it's coated in 26 millimeters of armor now if you're looking at this sh sh class of ship from a gameplay point of view and from a game design point of view especially in a game like world of warships you're, you're kind of thrown into a conundrum so i do understand why they did this to some extent because this ship is armed with 14 inch guns and in this game 14 inch guns are kind of becoming a thing of the past right around tier six and you've got a battleship that's capable of doing 27 plus knots with uh you know can, can it, it can't even go any faster with the boost you can put on in, in the game with the uh, speed flag and the likes um and then of course now we have brisk so it can go faster than that and it's supposed to be at, at a minimum this ship should be pretty decently well armored when it comes to game design because of the the way that the armor was reflected in, in real life ironically uh one of the lesser armored portions of this ship was actually the conning tower and normally that's the most well-armored part of, of any ship in this game. And in real life too, normally it would be because that's you know that's where all the officers would ideally be during battle. But turns out the from the uh, Royal Navy's um, studies, officers tended to just stay on the normal um, sailing bridge rather than retreat to the conning tower because the sailing bridge offers superior protection. And what's going to happen? A shell's actually going to hit this. Now, not only was the armor itself of high quality, but the layout of the ship's armor scheme and the internal bits of the ship itself was much better this go around compared to previous uh, Royal Navy capital ships. The powder charges were kept well away from the magazines this guy uh, this go round. I mean, just look at what happened with Jutland with the British battle cruisers there, and then with the Hood. And speaking of King George V battleships, uh, the Duke of York at the um, I'm sorry, not Duke of York, the Prince of Wales at the Battle of the Denmark Strait with the Bismarck Hood ate a 15-inch shell to likely her, her powder magazine or uh, one of her other magazines, and it quickly spread from the powder magazine to the magazine, and the ship sank within five minutes of engaging the Bismarck, and the Prince of Wales that was present that received quite the battering while did receive quite extensive damage still managed to... to um, to stay afloat and, and to disengage even with her guns not fully working because they were still being installed when she left port but yes the, the, the ships all around were supposed to be and and were some of the best designed and uh, best armored ships of the war but when we look at the king george in game she's incredibly squishy now like i said of course it is a pretty tough situation from a game design point of view again 14 inch guns but it's supposed to have you know some of the best armor at its well out, out, out of the game really again it was second only to the yamato so let's look at her in game now after looking at her in real life so again if you take a look at the armor scheme of the king george v her main battery belt is quite thick it's 381 millimeters so again they went with the 15 inch estimate for the main battery belt um but that's about it when it comes to the ship's armor. The the deck of her citadel is only 25 millimeters. When in real life, the machinery deck was again supposed to be like 143 millimeters thick. And even if you add on uh, the casemate armor on top of that, and even the deck armor on top of that, well, actually, no, that is the deck armor. <laughs> it's still nowhere near thick enough as it should be. Um, and of course, the ship's coated in 26 millimeters of armor, which is appropriate for a tier 7 tech line battleship, but because of the game's mechanics when it comes to overmatching and um, HE pens and stuff, results in the ship being an absolutely just pinata for any decent HE spamming ship. Now, this all being said, with uh, the lackluster armor of the ship in game, the, the, again, the belt armor is still quite thick, but the Citadel is exposed. However, again, with that really thick 
belt armor, you can bounce just about anything if you are appropriately angled. But again, with 26 millimeters of armor, they don't have to hit you there to do damage to you. They can just aim at your upper belt or your bow or your stern, especially when you get double up tier to tier 9, as happens quite a bit with tier 7 ships nowadays. However, that being said, I still do like this ship. I like this ship a lot in game. I just wish they had managed to work in the fact that she was, again, the second best protected battleship of the war into the game a bit better. Um, so, anyway, looking at the ship in game, we've already ran through the armor. So, um, so our ability, she has 60,500 uh, hit, hit points, which is actually pretty good for a tier 7 battleship. So, again, a kind of a way that it's reflecting that pedigree there. Um, now, her artillery. She has, of course, the 14-inch guns that we talked about. She has two quad-mounted 14-inch turrets, and then she has the one dual-mounted 14-inch turret. Uh, these 14-inch guns reload in 25 seconds base, which is a very good thing. They won 80 in 36 seconds. They have a maximum dispersion of 225 meters, and she does have a maximum range of 18.2 kilometers. And again, this is with my commander build. I'll throw old, old Bert back up here again so you can see what I'm running. Her HE, she does get good old British BB HE, does a maximum damage of 6100, a 41% chance of causing a fire on targets with a battleship with 10 guns that reloads in 26 seconds. That is a nice fire starter right there, like uh, the British battleships are. So, uh, the HE comes out of the tube at 757 meters a second, the AP does a maximum damage of 10,500, and comes out the tube at 757 meters a second. This is the short fuse AP. So that means that um, the shell has a shorter fuse time when it connects with some armor. It takes much shorter for the shell to actually detonate unlike standard AP which has a longer um, a longer fuse time to allow it to penetrate more into armor. So this means that this ship is excellent with its AP against um, cruisers and lightly armored battleships. And yeah, if you catch a cruiser broadside into this thing, uh, you're going to have a much better chance of actually pinning it and citadeling it than you would in a normal battleship with normal AP with a similar shell caliber. And it, it is very good at that. It's also good for chunking battleships, um, bows and sterns, and the superstructures of battleships, especially ones with lots of superstructure like German battleships or American battleships. Just aim a little bit up with the AP. You'll easily chunk them for like 10k. And... You could also just swatch over, uh, swap one over to the HG and just burn them down there as well. Uh, she does have 1633 millimeter secondaries that they're more for AA than anything. Um, I rarely get secondary kills with these things. It's just like, you know, the gunner gets lucky and actually hits the target. A defense, she has an A rating of 62, which was kind of okay in the past, but now it's just been pretty lackluster. Maneuverability, she can go 29.4 knots with the speed flag equipped. She has a turning circle race of 790 meters and a rudder shift time of 15 seconds. Her concealment with the commander skill gets her down to 12.7 kilometers, which is really good for a tier 7 uh, battleship. For her consumables, she, you get a choice of fighter or spotter. You get a heal. It's a standard heal. You don't get the good super battle, uh, super British BB heal until you get to the lion. So this regens 435 hit points per second. It's active for 30.8 seconds. Reloads in 57 seconds. You get five charges with the battleship superintendent skill, and she gets a normal damage con that's active for 16.5 seconds and reloads in 76 seconds. So in game, the King George V, despite again her unfortunately not reflecting her real life state is in my opinion one of the best tier 7 battleships. This is one of the few tier 7 battleships that up tiers really well. Mainly because of that British BBHE. You know, she doesn't only have 14 inch guns and if she had normal BBHE, even with the 26 second reload time, she would be pretty okay, but since you get that British BBHE with that 26 second reload time, I'm sorry, that 25 second reload time, you don't really care too much when you get up to Now, you do care if they shoot at you, and if you can bait them into shooting your exceptionally well-armored belt, sure, you will bounce everything that gets shot at you, but again, they don't have to hit you there. They can hit you in your stern, hit you in your bow, and easily cleave 10 to 12k off of your ship. But if, if you can either get into a position where you're kiting, you're able to use your throttle to your best abilities to avoid the shells or throw off their shots, you can easily 
farm down tier 9 ships in this thing. And again, with the 14-inch AP, with the British Short Fuse AP, cruisers, I mean, even higher tier cruisers, sure, you only have 14-inch shells, and that may not do much against battleships, but against cruisers, <laughs> that's still quite a large shell finding its way to their armor. So she's still pretty darn good in that aspect there. Um, as well, too, you do actually get the, the spotter, which gives you a much more usable range when you have that up. And further giving you a, an ability to just you know sit at a kiting flank a, a when you get double up tiered. When the ships are forced to push into you, pushing into a British battleship is one of the most painful things for anything to be forced to do. Um, again, if something does catch you, they'll catch your flat broadside because of how well armored your broadside is, ironically, at this point. The shells are going to arm and they're going to citadel you. And again, the citadel is exposed, so yeah, that's not great either. Now, when this thing is actually top tier, this thing's fantastic. I mean, 14 inch at tier 7 is not the largest caliber ever, but it's still plenty enough to bully uh, cruisers and still slap the absolute living crap out of a battleship that shows you broadside. Uh, of course, at tier 9 too, if something does show you broadside, uh, you can rest assured that your shells are definitely going to at least pin their armor. You're going to have very few that overpin, if any at all, thanks to that short fuse time. So, yeah, I mean, she's just a good all-around ship. One that up tiers very well. Now, what does suck with the British battleship line is that you go from the king george at tier 7 to the monarch at tier f at tier 8 which is the exact same hull as the um as the king george the fifth except it does get f finally a 32 millimeter bow so you can you know at least bow tank at this point in time but the rest is still the same when it comes to the the armor layout and the the amount of hit points. So you went from having a decent number of hit points at tier 7 to having the exact same number of hit points at tier 8 when you're actually on the kind of lower end at tier 8 with those hit points. Um, at least you get a 32mm bow at that point. But I actually like the Monarch. I know a lot of players don't like the Monarch, but I, I do find you know her 9 15 inch guns with a, a 20, what is it, 23, 25 second reload time um, with British BBHE to be quite formidable at yeah 25 second reload time on nine 15 inch guns with british bbhe i think she's fine but no uh, monarch's another video that i've done already um so we'll i'll stop being a monarch stand here and get back to the king george but a ship that i do like uh, a real still historical ship and i really just love the way the king george the fifth class looks too uh we built the um the duke of york sorry the prince of wales um was that last? Yeah, that was our last summer model, and I'm very familiar with the ship's layout thanks to that 1350 Tamiya model here. And besides, like the Iowa class, it's probably one of the prettiest battleships that. Uh, well, besides the Iowa, the Roma, and the um, 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 um the the uh, what's the class called? The South Dakota class, one of the prettiest battleships, most one of the most appealing to the eye. She has the correct aesthetics, at least in my opinion. But anyway, guys, that's my two cents on the King George V, a fantastic Tier 7 tech line ship. One that you will probably be enjoying if you're grinding up the British Battleship tech line. So let me know what you guys think about the King George in the comments down below. Hope you all have a wonderful Thursday. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. One way to 40,000 subs, and I cannot thank you guys enough for that. Hope you're all having a wonderful Thursday. Have a wonderful rest of your week. And finally, hope to catch you guys in the next one.